Here we're going to look at two problems from the Thailand Math Olympiad. And before we get started, I want to point out that I've been to Thailand. I went on a rock climbing trip to Tonsai, which is like near Krabi Town. Anyway, we're going to look at a problem from 2017 and another problem from 2014. So this first one from 2017 says that we want to show for all primes P, the cube root of P plus the cube root of P to the fifth is irrational. So I think there's probably a bunch of ways to do this. But the way that we're going to do it is somewhat of a modification of the classic way to prove that the square root of P is irrational. So let's maybe get to it. So let's set x equal to this quantity right here. So we've got cube root P plus cube root of P to the fifth. And we want to cube this equation in some way or another to get rid of the cube roots. But I'm going to change it around a little bit first so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to subtract a cube root of p from both sides of the equation. So that gives us x minus the cube root of p equals the cube root of p to the fifth. Now when we cube this equation, we've eliminated the cube roots on the right hand side. So let's maybe go ahead and cube this equation like I said. So that's going to give us x minus the cube root of p, that whole thing cubed, equals p to the fifth. Now the binom by the binomial theorem, we know how to multiply this out. So that's going to give us x cubed. And then the next term is going to be minus 3 times the cube root of p times x squared. And so we get that from taking two copies of x and then one copy of minus cube root of p. And then next we're going to have plus 3 times the cube root of p squared times x. And then finally minus the cube root of p cubed. So that's going to give us p. So we have this is equal to p to the fifth. Now we're at the first tricky part of this problem. So we want to simplify this so there's no cube roots of p left. And the way that we'll do that is to take this value of x and plug it into one of these that's making this x squared. So just to reiterate, we're going to have x cubed minus 3 times the cube root of p times x times the cube root of p plus the cube root of p to the fifth, and then plus 3 times the cube root of p squared times x minus p equals p to the fifth. Okay, so just to reiterate, I split this x squared up into an x times an x, and I left one of the x's in place, and I replaced the other one with this purple underline. Okay, so now let's see if that can be used to do anything. Well, notice we've got a 3 cube root of p times x times cube root of p, and that's negative. And then here we have the same thing attached to a plot positive 3. So let's see, that means that this distributed here will cancel with this thing on the outside. And that's actually good news, because now if we distribute this cube root of p onto this cube root of p to the fifth, we'll get the cube root of p to the sixth, which is p squared. So let's write that down. So here we have x cubed minus 3 times p squared times x minus p equals p to the fifth, like that. And now that we've got a polynomial that our value x satisfies, we want to work towards showing that x is irrational, and we'll do that by way of contradiction. So let's just write that here. So by way of contradiction, suppose that x equals a over b, where a and b are both integers, and the GCD of a and b is equal to 1. So we can assume that it is a fraction in lowest terms. So next, we'll plug this rational value of x into our polynomial equation and see what that gives us. That gives us a cubed over b cubed minus 3p squared times a over b minus p equals p to the fifth. Okay, so next we're going to take this equation and multiply by b cubed so that we have an equation involving integers instead of an equation involving rational numbers. 
So let's see, multiplying that thing by b cubed will give us a cubed minus 3p squared a times b squared minus p times b cubed equals p to the fifth times b cubed, like that. Now next, we can see that every number in there is a multiple of p except possibly one. So this number right here is a multiple of p, this number right here is a multiple of p, and this number right here is a multiple of p. But what that tells us is that a cubed is a multiple of p because we can write a cubed as p times something, or in other words, p divides a cubed. But if a prime divides a perfect cube, then that means that prime divides whatever's building the perfect cube. In other words, that tells us that the prime divides a. So that's a pretty standard result. But now if the prime divides a, we can write a as some multiple of the prime. So let's write a as m times p, where m is some number, mp. Okay, so now let's throw this back into this equation right here. So let's maybe write that like this arrow. Let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us m cubed times p cubed minus three, and then we'll have m times p cubed times b squared minus p times b cubed equals p to the fifth times b cubed, like that. But now, notice that we can take this entire equation and divide it by p because we've got a p in all of the terms here. So if we divide this entire equation by p, that's going to give us m cubed p squared minus 3mp squared b squared minus b cubed equals p to the fourth b cubed, like that. Now we're gonna play the same game that we did just above. So notice that this term right here is a multiple of p, this term right here is a multiple of p, and this term right here is a multiple of p. But that means b cubed is a multiple of p, but that means that p divides b cubed, but that means that p divides b. But check it out, we found a common divisor of a and b. Meanwhile, we assumed that the GCD of a and b was equal to one, so that leads us to our contradiction. And so what have we contradicted? We contradicted that it was possible to write x as a rational number a over b. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at our second problem. So now let's look at this next problem, which has to do with solving a functional equation. So our goal is to find all functions from the real numbers to the real numbers, such that for any x, y, we have f of x times y minus one, plus f of x times f of y equals two x, y minus one. We're gonna play the standard game when it comes to functional equations, and that is look for special cases of this functional equation to get an idea for how this thing behaves. So first off, what I wanna do is set x equal to x and y equal to zero. That's gonna give us f of negative one, because we have zero minus one, plus f of zero times f of x. That's from this thing right here equals negative one. Okay, so that's not super helpful yet, but notice that this is true for all values of x. So we might as well check for x equals zero. So let's take this equation that we just built and plug in x equals zero and see what that gives us. So now we'll have f of negative one plus f of zero squared equals negative one. Now again, that may not seem super helpful, but what we can do at this point is to subtract these two equations. And notice if we subtract these two equations, we'll eliminate some parts. We'll eliminate this f evaluated at negative one and we'll eliminate the negative one on the right hand side. So that'll leave us with f of zero times f of x minus f of zero squared equals zero. 
So we can factor an f of zero out of that. We get f of zero times f of x minus f of zero equals zero. So that's good, and that gives us two possibilities. So either f of zero equals zero, or f of x equals f of zero for all real numbers x. But actually, that's a problem. So f of x cannot be equal to f of zero for all real numbers x. That would make f a constant function. So let's see why this is impossible. So let's set this equal to the constant number c. But now plugging this constant value for our function into our functional equation will give us c plus c squared. That's what happens on the left-hand side here, equals two times x y minus one. Already we see there's a problem because the right hand side is variable but the left hand side is constant. But we can maybe flesh that out just a little bit more by setting x equal to x. In other words, that's our free variable and we'll set y equal to a half. Okay, so let's see what that boils this down to. So now we have c squared plus c plus one, moving this one over, equals x. And this is true for all x in R. But like I said, we have this right-hand side is a constant. It's this combination of this number c, but then this left-hand side is variable. Oh, and I got my left and right mixed up, but that's okay, you guys know what I'm talking about but that's a contradiction. So that means we have this possibility only. In other words, f of zero must be equal to zero. Now we wanna continue playing this game of plugging in values of x and y so that we can come up with some sort of other equations that will help us solve for our function. So next, maybe we could do x equals one, y equals one. That would be a logical next choice. So if we get x equals one and y equals one, that's gonna give us f of zero here, because we've got one minus one, plus f of one squared equals, well, that's gonna be two minus one, which is one. But we just determined that f of zero is equal to zero. So that means we have f of one squared equals one, but if f of one squared equals one, that tells us that f of one equals plus or minus one. And at the moment, both of those possibilities need to be looked at. So let's look at this first case. And the first case I'll take to be f of one equals one. Now let's play the same game, but let x be free and we'll let y be one. So in other words, we wanna say x is equal to x, and y is equal to one, and let's see what that gives us into our original equation. So that's gonna give us f of x minus one, that's what you get for this guy right here, plus f of x times f of one, but we've already determined that f of one is one for this case, equals 2x minus one. So while we're at it, I wanna find a companion to this, maybe like a symmetric companion, and we can get that by taking this equation and plugging in x equals x plus one. In other words, we're gonna replace x with x plus one. So that's gonna turn this into f of x, that'll turn this into f of x plus one, and then the right-hand side will be 2x plus 1. So I'll reorder that a little bit, and we'll have f of x plus 1 plus f of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, good. So those are both really helpful um, equations to have. Now, since x times y shows up in two places in this equation, we might wanna set one of the variables equal to x times y and the other one equal to one. So let's see what we get if we do that. So let's set x equal to x times y and then we'll set y equal to one. So again, our motivation for that is to use the fact that that is going to give us something similar over here and something similar over here to our general setup. Okay, so that gives us f of xy minus one plus f of xy times f of one, but f of one is equal to one, 
equals 2xy minus 1. Okay, so let's compare that to the given equation, which I'll write just right below it. The given equation looks like f of xy minus 1 plus f of x times f of y equals 2xy minus 1. So notice this first term is the same, and this right-hand side of the equation is the same. But now, we can take these two equations and subtract them, and notice that that's going to give us f of xy minus f of x times f of y equals 0. In other words, we have f of xy equals f of x times f of y. So we've been looking at our first case, which is the case when f of 1 equals 1, and we came up with these three important identities, one involving f of x plus 1 and f of x, one involving f of x minus 1 and f of x, and the other one having this multiplicative rule. So that's good to see. Now next, we want to notice that x plus 1 times x minus 1 is x squared minus 1. But if we've got x squared minus 1, maybe we can do something with our functional equation to, to put it in terms of that. And we can with x equal x and y equal x. So in other words, we're going to take x equal to x, where that's free, and y is also free, but it's fixed at the first value of x. So let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us f of x squared minus 1 plus f of x squared equals 2x squared minus 1, like that. So that may not seem super helpful at the moment, but notice that we can take this and then using the multiplicative rule and the fact that this factors like a nice difference of squares, we can split that up into parts. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us f of x plus 1 times f of x minus 1 plus f of x squared equals 2x squared minus 1. Now next, we can take f of x plus 1 and f of x minus 1 and write it in terms of f of x and some other stuff using these first two equations. So let's do that. So this f of x plus 1 can be rewritten as negative f of x plus 2x plus 1. Okay. And then this f of x minus 1 can similarly be written as negative f of x uh, plus 2x minus 1, like that. And then next we have plus f of x quantity squared equals 2x squared minus 1, like that. So let's multiply out these two terms and see what we get. So we'll first have f of x squared from taking this times this. And then next we'll have minus 4x times f of x. And we get that from this negative f of x times 2x and then this negative f of x times 2x like that. And then next, we'll have negative f of x times negative 1, and then positive 1 times negative f of x, so that stuff cancels, so that's nice. And then finally, we have 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1, so that's going to give us 4x squared minus 1. So we've got something that looks like that. And then next, we still have this f of x squared that's on the outside equals 2x squared minus 1. Now let's see if we can start putting this together. So let's notice that this minus 1 and this minus 1 will cancel. And then next we can subtract 2x squared from both sides of the equation. And that gives us this quadratic equation, 2 times f of x squared minus 4x f of x plus 2x squared equals 0. Okay, so from there what I want to do is maybe notice that I can factor a 2 out of this entire equation. And if I factor a 2 out of this entire equation, I'll get f of x squared minus 2x times f of x uh, plus x squared equals 0. But that has a nice factored form, and in fact, this factors like f of x minus x quantity squared equals 0, which tells us that f of x equals x. 
So to reiterate, in the case when f of one equals one, we get that the function must be f of x equals x. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we'll look at the second case. Now we're ready to finish this problem off, and that's by looking at the second case, which is when f of one equals negative one. We're gonna use essentially the same tricks that we used to conquer the first case, so we'll go a little bit more quickly. So to start it off, we'll set x equal to x and y equal to one. So in other words, x is still free, but y is fixed at one. So that gives us the equation f of x minus one, and then we'll have plus f of x times f of one, but we're assuming f of one is negative one, so we get minus f of x equals two x minus one like that. Then we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, take this equation, and replace x with x plus one to get like a symmetric companion version. So that'll give us f of x minus f of x plus one equals two x plus one. Now next what we can do is write those in terms of f of x plus one and f of x minus one because that's what'll be most useful for our last calculations. So here we have f of x minus one equals f of x plus 2x minus 1. And then next, we have f of x plus 1 equals, well, let's see what that'll be. So move the f of x plus 1 over and the 2x plus 1 over. That'll give us f of x minus 2x plus 1, like that. So next, we're going to use the fact that x and y appear together here to set x equal to xy, or to motivate setting x equal to xy and y equal to 1 to see what that gives us. So that's going to give us f of xy minus 1. So that's what we get here. And then we'll have minus f of xy. So that's what we get here. Again, we pick up a minus sign because we're assuming that f of one equals negative one equals two xy minus one. Now we're gonna combine this with the original functional equation, which says that f of xy minus one plus f of x times f of y equals two xy minus one to achieve some sort of multiplicative formula involving like f of x times y. And in fact, now it's a slightly different multiplicative formula. It looks like f of xy equals minus f of x times f of y like that. Again, that's just from maybe subtracting these two equations and notice lots of stuff cancels except the f of x times f of y and the f of x times y. So now we're ready to finish it off. So we'll take x equal to x and then we'll take y also equal to x and see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us f of x squared minus one, but I'll go ahead and factor that x squared minus one as f of x minus one times f of x plus one. So again, that's our x, y minus one term. And then we'll have plus um, f of x quantity squared. So that's what we get from this guy equals 2x squared minus 1. Now using this multiplicative rule, we can factor out this f of x minus 1 times x plus 1 using that guy again over there. So that's going to be minus f of x minus 1 times f of x plus 1 plus f of x all squared equals 2x squared minus 1. Now we'll use our additive formulas up here to rewrite f of x minus one times f of x plus one. So this will be minus f of x plus two x minus one, and then f of x minus two x plus one, like that. So again, that is exactly how this thing right here got expanded using that rule up there that's in red. Okay, so next we have, this is plus f of x quantity squared equals two x squared minus one like that. Now all that's left to do is to multiply this stuff out, which I have over braced in red. So let's see what we do that, well let's see what we get when we start multiplying that out. So we'll have f of x times f of x, that's f of x squared, but it has a minus sign 
but it has a plus sign over here, so that's gonna cancel. Then we're gonna be left with f of x times negative two x plus one, plus f of x times two x minus one. So notice some stuff cancels there, and in fact, we're just going to be left with minus two times f of x. So again, that's from our cross term. So notice we have f of x times this guy right here plus f of x times this guy right here. The two x's cancel and we're left with like minus one, minus one. But we've got this minus sign on the outside that will cancel this minus sign. So in fact, this is positive. Then finally, we have two x minus one times two x plus one but it's attached to one, two minus signs. So that's gonna give us plus four x squared minus one. And then this uh, right-hand side of the equation is unchanged. So we get something like that. Okay, so notice the minus ones cancel from both sides and we're left with two times f of x equals minus two x squared. In other words, we have f of x equals negative x squared. And that finishes our calculation for our second case. And that's a good place to stop.